Putin has started his whole exercise of being head of state for money. He liked money. And there's a lot of money in Russia. It's a resource-rich country where if you're corrupt and there's no rules, you can take a lot of money. And I would, I would guess that over a 20-year period, Putin has stolen $200 billion from the Russian people. And the people around him have probably stolen another $800 billion. So there's a trillion dollars that has been stolen over, over 20 years. And, and so that was his first objective. But then you know, he discovered that he can really never step down because if he were ever to step down, that money would be taken away from him. He'd go to jail and he might even be killed. And so his second objective then is to keep his money and stay in power. And so he needs to stay in power. Now, how do you stay in power when you're in a situation where you're supposed to be in a democracy and you have, you've stolen all the people's money? Well, you have to do all sorts of really nasty stuff like start wars to distract people's uh, aggression towards you and make it towards other people. You've got to totally clamp down and, and repress your population. You have to kill your political opponents. You have to um, cheat in every possible way. And so that's how it's gone. And he's just riding, you know, he, he's like riding a Bronco where he could be thrown off at any moment. And if he does get thrown off, then he, he risks everything. And so he's just holding on for dear life one week after another. He doesn't know exactly how the Russian people, what they're going to do, how they're going to behave. He's scared of any threats. He's trying to eliminate them wherever possible. And the more time goes on, the riskier it gets, and the less he cares about what people think about what he does. 